Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Destiny from Deskfix, and welcome back to another video in the blog series using Django and React.js. In this one, we'll get started working with the authentication feature, starting with the register feature. That is what we'll be doing. Hopefully, you enjoy the video and learn something new. So, let's get started. Begin by opening up your code editor, and I'll come over to Alt Register. Good. Then, we need to import a couple of things. Very simple, We've, we already have the utility functions that perform these operations. Just import the use auth store. Um, that should be use auth store. Import that from dot dot slash dot dot slash store slash auth. Good. You also need to import register. So import register from does dot slash use slash auth. Oh, good. So we need to do that is pretty much what we want. Now let's create the state that will hold the user information as soon as they start typing in their full name, email, password, and password too. So this was one of the reasons why I had to create the comments first before the registration so that you have an idea of how we can manipulate the state. So that when we do the same thing here, it will not be way too complex for you, okay? So I'm gonna call the state bio data, and I will set bio data. So remember, you can call the state anything you want, but just use its naming convention, I'm calling it bio data. I'm gonna pass in a dictionary, then pass in full name, and an empty string here. So let's pass another sentence, add a comma, an email, empty string, password, empty string, password to empty string, all good. And I also need loading states. So it's loading and also set is loading. This should be equal to a boolean. So I'll initialize it with a false. And this is everything I need for now. For now. I also need navigate. I just remember that. This should be equal to use navigate. That will be imported from React router DOM. You can see that over here. That is pretty much it. Let's create the function that will handle the change of information that user type into the registration form. Handle bio data change, that's what I will call it. Personal event parameter in here. And then I want to set bio data to, first of all, remember how we did it in the last video, we first need to add the spread operator to pretty much preserve the state that we had initially, or let me put in the simpler words, this will preserve all the other informations that we have typed into the inputs and to allow us to type new informations without deleting the old informations that we already have in this bio data state. Then I want you to go ahead and pass in event.target.name should take what? Event.target.value. Good. And that is pretty much it for now. Let's go ahead and create the function that will now register the user. Handle register. This should be an async function. I'm passing an I'm passing in an event parameter so I can say e dot prevent default. And I believe you should know what prevent default does now. I'm not going to say it. Try to remember what Prevent Default does. I explained it in the last video. In case you can remember, it's pretty much used to prevent the default behavior of a form, which is reloading when the form is submitted. I want to set its loading to true. So as soon as we click on the register button, I want to start show, showing the loading or spinner icon in the inputs. That is why I'm setting this loading to true. I'll use it to manipulate that later. Now, 
I'm going to destructure error from the register function that we have created. So in case you don't understand, this is why I would highly recommend that you look into one of the videos that we had initially. Or even if you don't want to do that, it's totally understandable if you come into the utils auth and look at the register. So you see the register takes in full name, email, password, and password too. Then it will go ahead and create a new user for you. If there is an error, it returns the error. If there, if there is no error, it returns error as small. So what we want to do is over here, I get the error from over here firstly. Then I pass in biodata.fullname, biodata.email, biodata.password, biodata dot password to good. This is everything that I want. Now, if there's an error, remember it's written an error. If there's no error, it won't. So let's check if there is an error. That means an error came in, right? Let's go ahead and alert JSON dot stringify the error. So you see an error like uh, email already exists, password does not match, you know, things like that. I want to reset the form if there is an error. So let's create a reset form function. Reset form should be equal to the set biodata and then we need to pass in all the keys and set them to empty string. Full name, email, uh, full name, email, password, password to good. So as soon as we call this function here, if there is an error, do you know what it's going to do? So reset the form immediately and give the user the opportunity to retype their information. I hope that makes sense. In case you don't want to reset the password, you could just remove it. In case you only want to reset the full name and email, it's totally up to you how you want this to work, okay? But what if we don't have an error? What do I want to do? So if you don't have an error, I want to navigate to the home page. Good. Now, this one totally depends on how, on how you want it to be. You can see that over here in the register, as soon as we register a user, we automatically log them in. So guys, if you don't want to log a user in automatically, immediately you create the user, go ahead and comment it out. As simple as that. Then in the register, instead of redirecting to the home page, redirect to the login page so they can now log in with the new information that they just created. But I want to save the user a ton of stress by logging them in and redirecting them to the home page because that's our aim to simplify user experience. And after all this, I will go ahead and set this loading to false. Good. And now that we have all this information, so let's go ahead and prefill it in here. Starting with the form, this is going to be an on submit. I will pass in the handle register, good. And also for the input name, on change, on change of this input, I will pass in handle biodata change value, I will pass in biodata.fullname. I've explained most of this when we walk to the comments in exactly the last two videos. So what we're pretty much doing here is passing in, passing in the unchange for this input field so that as soon as we start typing into the full name input for the registration, it detects what we are typing, it grabs the value and it appends it to the state. That means it must have a name. Please do not forget that. Name over here must be full name. Do the same thing for other ones. Let me do them close to the name so you can see. So this, this, biodata.email, name is email. Do the same thing for password, biodata.password, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Password, name is password. 
finally do the same thing for confirm password. Password two. Save. Make sure the button type is submit and sign up. So now you can play around with the button whichever way you want. You can check if it's loading is equal, equal, equal to true. Do something else, do another thing. So I'm gonna open up this in here. Open up this. So if it's equal to true, what do I want to do? I'm gonna paste that button else. I'll still paste the same button. Uh, okay, I think we have an issue, guys. Um, let me just go back one step. Let me go one step back. Over here, I'm pasting this button. Over here, too, I'm pasting this button. Good. So since it's just one information, there is no need for the React fragment. So if it's loading, let's see processing. And instead of this icon, let's add a spinner icon and let's make the icon to spin by adding FE spin. And I also want to make the button to be disabled. All right. So that is pretty much it. Else, we leave it as sign up. So with all this out of the way, let's go ahead and visit the register page. But there you go. We have this issue. So let's see what it is. It says async is not defined. Good. So what have we done? See, we are passing in async in here, which is very, very wrong. Remove this one. Um, you see this function like this? I'm going to take this function. Handle rare register. This is how it should be, guys. E here. So async should just be out here like this. See? Then paste the function. Delete this old one. Then this should be working. See? So when you fill up this information, in case you don't know this extension that I'm using, it's called fake filler. It helps you, it helps you fill imputes very fast. I feel the same thing for the confirmation of the passwords. Testing 321. Okay, there is an issue with the passwords. Let's check. Please change this to password 2, the name to password 2, so that we don't have an issue, okay? So this one here should be testing 321. This one here too should be testing 321. Then go ahead, sign up. See, sign up successfully. Did you see that? Look at the look at the API. Can you see it's made a call to the registration API, created a new user, returned the 201 created status code. It automatically got token for a user, logged the user in, and it redirected the user to the home page from over here. So now if you come over to application, um I think we walk to cookies. Cookies, local host. Now, can you see that access token is being stored here? Very good. See access token, see refresh token. So this is how we know that a user is logged in. So that's pretty much it. A user is now successfully logging in. And right now a user is authenticated. But see the register and login button is still showing over here at the top, which is something I do not really like. So you might be asking, how do we change this? How do we update it? Mm, let's go ahead and do that. I will open up the header. Header JSX. And I want to import some things here. Just import the use. Ops. So here you go. And I also want you to add in const is logged in and also user. So what I'm pretty much doing here now is getting information that exists already in the use of store. And this is just time in case you don't know. Don't worry, I'll explain what I'm doing right now. So state dot is logged in. State dot user. So let me explain what I'm doing, guys. So in case you don't know, the states management library that we are using for this project is Sustand. 
And what we just did over here is use hot storm already has the function that keeps track of the user information. So it keeps track of the user ID and the username, which means if a user is logged in, this user over here will actually return the user information, else it will return null. So what we then pretty much did here was we grabbed the is logged in and also the user. Now, if a user is logged in, this user here will have the user information. If a user is not logged in, this will have null. So what we just need to go ahead and do is down to the part where we have the register. But before we even do that, let me show you guys something. Log is logged in on the header. Let me show you. Open up your console and what do you see? True, right? Open up an incog needle mode and open up your console. And what did you see? False. Why are we seeing false here? That is because a user is not logged in. It's an incognito mode. But so far here, we can see true, which means the user is logged in. I've explained this a lot of times in the channel. There are a lot of videos that broke all this down where we wrote all the codes one after the other. So please, you can you can pretty much, I have a dedicated playlist for authentication using Django, React, JS, and Zostand, where all we did in that series was just work with authentication, login, logout, create password, forgot password, things like that. So I have a playlist that is dedicated to that. Probably I will leave the link in the description below so that you can make reference to that, okay? So all this aren't new anymore. We've worked with this extensively in the channel. So if you're new here, please make sure to check out the videos that we initially have for authentication. We've made videos for this. And right now what we're just doing is reusing the codes that we have made in the past. So guys, we want to hop over to where we have the register. So um, you see where we have the register and the login. Just need to perform a very simple operation here. Firstly, wrap the both of that in React fragments like this. Also, duplicate it. So one is gonna be dashboard. Uh -oh. One is gonna be dashboard and logout. Another is gonna be register and login. Now let's try the very simple conditional of rendering here that, that says, if logged in is equal to true, then what do we want to do? We want to go ahead and pass in something in there, else we pass in something in there. So now take your code. If is logged in is true, which means the user is logged in, we want to show the dashboard and logout links. So copy this one and put it inside this bracket. Copy this other one and put it inside this bracket. And save your code. There you go. So right now, can you see dashboard and logouts? But for this one, you can see register and login. Congratulations, we have successfully done this. So over here, if you want to change up the colors, it's totally up to you how you want that to be. You can also even go ahead and change up the links. So dashboard should be just equal to dashboard, dashboard, and logouts should go to logouts. Don't worry, we'll work with that in the future tutorials. So yep, that is pretty much it. It's working as expected. If there is something that you don't understand, or if there is something that is not working for you, please let me know in a question or in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Also, you can start checking out some of the courses in the description as many of the courses there would simplify React.js and Django for you and will actually make you a better React.js, Django or Python developer. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, mad love. Peace out.